Providence comes to a man in wonderful and unexpected ways. One can have everything in life and lose it in an instant at the moment of capture. One can endure 20 years of servitude, but all is by the grace of God. I was captured when I was 16 years old. I never saw my family or my home again. I crossed the ocean in a slave ship and conditions always fell and perilous. I was sold at market like any other commodity. I was bought by a British officer from New England. He gave me his family name, Pierpoint, and baptized me Richard. Since 1760, my name has been Richard Pierpoint. This is my story. Twenty years passed, and I performed my duty as a servant in valet, and in return, my master performed his duty to clothe and shelter me. I thank Providence for my lot in life. But one day, Providence visited me with a new and unforeseen salvation. It came in the guise of war. When the American colonists rose up against the crown and made war in 1775, men were forced to choose between two sides, the rebels and the loyalists. The rebels supported separation from the British Empire, while the loyalists stood faithful to the crown. The king promised land and freedom for those who fought for him. By the grace of God and the king, I chose freedom. And so I fell in with Lieutenant Colonel John Butler's Rangers, based in Fort Niagara. In time, several hundred of black volunteers joined the Rangers. And so, I became a soldier, lived a soldier's life, caught up in a bloody war. <laughs> the war didn't end well for the Crown and the 13 colonies, but it did manage to preserve Canada north of the lakes. And in 1784, I was a free man. <laughs> God be praised. No more orders or commanding officer ordering me about. I could go just wherever and whenever I wanted, save for the new United States where slavery prevailed. I was given 200 acres in Upper Canada. Working the land was hard. I had to transform a thick forest into farmland, build a house, a fence, all by myself. All around me did the same. It is hard to build a country. Finally, I sold my 200 acres and uh, I worked for my neighbors, white farmers. People call me Black Dick or Captain Dick. <laughs> they say a uh, creek still carries my name, Dick's Creek, a tributary of 12 Mile Creek near St. Catharines? In 1812, the Americans attacked Canada, and the clarion call of war was heard from one end of the colony to the other. If the Yankees were to win, I would surely return to slavery. I had my fill of the horrors of war, but there comes a time when a man has to take up arms and fight for his freedom and dignity. So I sent the petition to King's Governor, Major General Sir Isaac Brock, requesting permission to form an all-Negro Army Corps to resist the invader and fight shoulder to shoulder. The General accepted, and the Colored Corps was born. We were about 30 men, 
which is quite a lot if you consider there were only 100 free black men in all Upper Canada. Although the color corps was my idea, and despite my experience, I wasn't given command. Our officers are white. Nevertheless, we all fought together to repel the enemy. And in the battlefield, we fought like men. And it wasn't black blood or white blood that flowed, no. Everybody's blood is red. It's the only color that ran through our fields and in our rivers. Major General Isaac Brock died in one of our bloodiest battles at Queenston Heights. He now joins the ranks of immortal heroes. The Colored Corps fought with courage, discipline, and composure. And in 1813, we were given a dangerous task. We had to build Fort Mississauga, just in front of Fort Niagara, on the other side of the river. With this fort, the Americans were prevented to use Lake Ontario to bring supplies to Fort Niagara. This was a dangerous task, and often we had to work nights to avoid being fired on. But we succeeded, and Fort Mississauga stood proudly with its stone and brick tower, surrounded by its walls, a six-foot moat, and four large cannons. Peace was restored in 1815, when Canada was unoccupied by the Americans. Mm -mm. That spring, the colored cord was disbanded. and the government gave us 100 acres in Oro, near Lake Simcoe. But I was tired. I've seen too much of war. Although freed from the bonds of slavery, I knew the lot of every son of Adam who tills the soil all his days for himself or for another man. I long to see my native land once again. I appealed to Governor Maitland for passage back to Africa. He refused. And he gave me a hundred acres in Garifraxa near the town that's now called Fergus. And so it is here, half exiled in this land that gave me back my freedom, that I will pass my dying days. But all is grace. I am proud of this country. I'm proud to have carried the glorious banner of free men. This country is built on freedom and the rejection of servitude. All is grace. I served the King's grace and our beautiful country, Canada.